Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop here. Welcome. It's a friendly place. Mitch behind the camera. I'll do the fabricating. I'll talk to you about what's going on. So today we're going to do engine mods. That's what I call it. On the cub motor, this is a cub motor. If the engine's in the frame, you can work on a multitude of things. You can work on the clutch, electrical inside the case, the cams, the gearbox. But if you want to change the sprocket, which is the countershaft sprocket, you have to you have to take the motor out of the flame frame and split the case, which is a pain. Now, I don't know how often you have to change the sprocket, but I've got three sprockets. I got a 17, 18, and a 19, and I don't know which one I really want. I'm thinking the 18. So we're going to make a door here. There's going to be a plate which bolts on here. We're going to make a hole with a hole saw. And then while the engine's still in the frame, I can change sprockets. I don't have enough room here in the metal to put a 19 through there because the, this sprocket has to go through there. I've got little Allen screws to hold on the plate. That's gonna be the plate there. I found a piece of aluminum. I've got a little oil seal. I wanted to show you this. I've been working on the transmission a little bit. I've got a bushing here. This is where the oil seal goes. It goes over top like that. That seals the case. This oil seal goes into that one quarter inch aluminum plate. And so I had to take out, out the old, old bushing. So there's the old bushing. I had to make up what I call a driver. It's the right size. And then I used the arbor press and I pressed out the old bushing, made a new bushing, then I honed it. So that's all taken care of. So what we're doing today goes over, over the bushing. So we're gonna go to the mill. This first part happens in the mill. And then the second part, making the plate, I've got a drawing. I got this from uh, a guy that I'll be messaging. He's in Australia. His name is, is Steve Burns. He's got four cubs. He says that he doesn't ride much anymore, but he used to ride. Back in 1989, he set a Guinness uh, record for the fastest wheelie in the world, 150 miles an hour. Well, that record stood for a little while. In 1999, it was surpassed, or maybe earlier. And the new record is 192 miles an hour. Can you imagine doing 192 miles an hour on your back wheel? That's amazing, that's scary. So we're gonna go over to the mill, set this up, and I'll show you what's going on. We're gonna bolt the case down. This is the right side case. I've got, I've got the clamps all ready to go. And then we're gonna take a dial indicator and we're going to dial up to the surface here where the oil seal fits in. And then once, once that's done, then we bolt this case on top using these existing screws or bolt holes. That's when we bore so that we know that our bore here is perfectly concentric with this bearing and the oil seal here. So there's a little bit going on there. I've got one bolt right here, and then I need to hold it somewhere else. So I'm gonna hold it at the back here, where there's a mount, and I put this under here, and that fits pretty well like that. I got a gap here, because it, it's a casting, it's not perfect, but I've got a, a feeler gauge, and this is 18 thou, and that happens to fit quite nicely like that. So that's when I put this up and hold it down like that. So I'll put a little bit of thought into this. It's not just happening right now. Well, it is happening right now, but there was a bit of thought that went into it. So holding it in two spots. I don't, I don't want to just hold it in one spot because it can move. So it's always good to have have, have two spots minimum to hold something down like this. I've got my fancy little one here. It's in tenths of a thou. 
So from here to here, like from the zero to the one, that's only one thou. So this thing is really, really sensitive. So this needle has to go to, see that needle? It's gotta be moved a thou. It's gotta go down to the one there. So we'll see which way we're going. Okay, there we go. Move it a little bit. Lock the table. And the other side was at one, so it's out one quarter of one thou, which is almost nothing. So there, we're gonna, that's our center right there. Zero, zero. Got my soft hammer here. This is soft rubber, so I can hit on aluminum and not, not cause any damage. And that looks like it's seated. There's the line. I don't see any gap. I've got my four special bolts, BSC, I think. I think it's BSC with a 55 degree thread angle. All right, so first we'll use the hole saw. We're through. So we're gonna swap this out for a boring bar now and we have a size so that the sprocket fits through. got some vibration. It's got a ring to it. I thought I bored it way too big, but can you see how there's a little bit of movement there? Probably five ten thou and then the sprocket goes through so that's what I wanted so now I got to face this here it goes out to right there I'm going to show you the allen screw that we're going to use here there's very small four mil allen screws can you see how there's not a lot of space there but that does that that'll go like that that's going to go right like that and I'm going to have six of them all around there so what I need to do is I need to face this now so I, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on a really slow speed. I'm going to bring the boring bar down and then I'm, I'm not going to use the feed in the quill. I'm going to raise up the table because that's going to be more, more secure. We'll get a little bit more speed going. Okay, so that's about 100, 160 RPM. So I'm going to, I'm going to raise up the table slowly, slowly, slowly and hopefully it all goes well. This is the part I was most concerned about. Oops. Hear it? And I might need to hold it so it, it doesn't ring. So we're watching that bit right there because it, it's not cleaned up yet. Okay. Okay, do you see here? It was the last area to clean up. Can you see there's a little bit there that didn't quite clean up? In machine shop terms, 
that's known as a as a witness mark. If a customer comes into a shop and tells you to take off the least amount possible, you want to leave a a little witness mark so the customer knows that you did what you were told. So that's what I learned back when I was a kid after high school. Witness mark. So it ended up exactly on size. That's a bonus. So we need to make this 3.053 or something like that so it fits in there. And the OD of the plate we want to make is going to be 3.560, oh, that looks good. Kind of a round circle. Let's go make it really round. There you go, it's right on, it's on zero. It's good. So what I do, you have to make sure this is clean. I put this in like that. I'm pressing this piece against the chuck, and then this finger is pressing whatever I want against this piece. So I tighten it up. It's not that tight right now. Let's just see if it spins true. Can you see how it's got a wobble to it? So this is, this is where the technique comes in. So there, see how there's a gap? I don't have this super tight right now. See that go in? And I pull it out, do the next one. Okay, okay, so that one's tight, that one's fine. And this one here, is not fine so it needs to come out a little bit i'm going to open up the chuck just a touch it's a little too tight so if you go around and you get these all the same then it's going to run true Okay, so I think that's pretty good. Oh, this one's a little loose. Okay, so now I make the chuck tight. So I'm just holding on with one, one jaw, one, one, one tooth. I think, I don't know the proper name. Someone's gonna tell me, there's gonna be a comment, I know it. So now we'll start it up and let's see if it runs true. Okay, so now we can, we can bore out the middle and we have to make a couple steps. Let's take it off and let's see if it fits into the case. Oh, look at that, it, it, it's a nice fit. How's that? That's a good fit. We had it in the chuck this way, we need to flip it around. Then we have to bore here for the little oil seal. That's what we gotta do now, so 
we're getting close. Okay, so it's one thou over, but that's okay. So that's where the oil seal is going to sit, right in there. So it's, a, it's a, see that? It's a little bit of a press fit. It doesn't want to go in there right now. I thought we were going to have time to make the holes in here and attach it to the case, but we are running a bit short of time. But what I want to see now is how this all, all fits together, if how the height is of this and the oil seal, because the oil seal has to go on that bronze bushing right there. So why don't we put this together just loosely. You can see how it all fits. There's the sprocket going on. There's an oil seal that goes in there. Those are on their way. I want to know if the height's good. So. so that guy goes over there and so the oil seal goes in this way like that because it has to stop the oil from going from the case outside. Kind of looks like this is too thick. It needs to be a little bit thinner there. So I'm not sure about that. This here, this is this is where the clutch goes. So if I take off the case, we can see how we can see how close the taper is getting to that bronze bushing there. I was told this is a fiddly thing to do, so. Let's take this off. So there's a little bit of, well, after you torque down the nut, it's going to go onto the taper a little bit more. So there's not really a whole lot more. So what I need to do is to, this is, is too thick. So what I need to do is to go into the lathe, make up a, an arbor, a spigot. This has to be a little bit thinner here where my nail is so that the seal can go down just a little bit more. So I have a little bit of work to do. And then I also have to make sure that I've got room in between, in between the clutch and this as well. So. Engine modifications, not always simple, but effective. I have a little work to do. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out in the shop here. We hope you enjoyed what we do here. And Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us some coffee, we'd be much appreciated. And see you next week, next time. <laughs>